the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Minister Dr. Nalinda Jayathissa announced that the 2025 budget proposal will be presented to the Parliament in January next year. Speaking at a cabinet press briefing this morning. With the commencement of its first maritime conference, Why Sri Lanka 2024, today in Colombo, Sri Lanka is poised to solidify its place in the global marine economy. With the S&P SL20 finishing higher and the ASPI posting a significant gain, the market recovered well from yesterday's downward trend on the second trading day of the week. And Asian stocks fell as Trump threatened new trade tariffs, reigniting trade war concerns. Despite Wall Street's record highs, US stock futures were subdued, limiting gains. From Studio 24, here's Anuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Minister Dr. Nalinda Jayathissa confirmed that the 2025 budget proposal will be presented to Parliament on the 9th of January 2025. Speaking at the Cabinet press briefing this morning, the Minister also announced that the second reading of the 2025 budget will take place in February. Minister Dr. Nalinda Jayathissa confirmed that the 2025 budget proposal will be presented to the Parliament on the 9th of January next year. He stated that the budget will be designed to strengthen the public trust in government and initiate steps toward achieving desired development, fulfilling the expectations of the people. The Cabinet of Ministers has approved a proposal submitted by President Anur Kumar Nayaka in his capacity as the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development to prepare the 2025 budget in the alignment with the scope of each ministry. The budget will ensure provisions for the implementation of projects and programs adhering to the expenditure limits specified in the Public Finance Management Act No. 44 of 2024 and the Government Policy Statement. Additionally, the Cabinet has granted approval to prepare an interim vote on account for the first four months of 2025 covering government recurrent and capital expenditure, public debt servicing and debt structuring cost. Additionally, the Cabinet has granted approval to prepare an interim vote on account for the first four months of 2025, covering government recurrent and capital expenditure, public debt servicing and debt restructuring cost. This decision was made due to the insufficient time to complete the statutory steps to require to pass the appropriation bill for the year 2025. The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce has welcomed the announcement of the staff level agreement for the third review under the International Monetary Fund Extended Fund Facility Program for Sri Lanka. This agreement highlights the progress the country has made in implementing structural reforms and achieving fiscal sustainability during its critical economic recovery phase. This agreement highlights the progress of the country that has made in implementing structural reforms and achieving fiscal sustainability during its critical economic recovery phase. While recognizing the progress achieved, the Chamber emphasizes the importance of maintaining reform momentum and addressing key constraints that hinder long-term sustainable growth. The Chamber expressed its anticipation for the government to meet the necessary requirements for disbursement by the IMF board. Furthermore, the Chamber reiterated its support for continued collaboration between the government and the IMF to ensure that Sri Lanka's recovery remains on track. It also stressed the need for a comprehensive strategy to boost investor confidence and stimulate private sector partnership in the economy. Sri Lanka is set to strengthen its position in the global marine economy with the launch of its inaugural Marine Summit, Voyage Sri Lanka 2024, today in Colombo. Organised by the Export Development Board, the summit is expected to attract over 200 participants from 40 countries, including industry experts, investors, policymakers and leaders in marine and offshore services as well as boat building. The EDB chief expressed confidence that the summit will showcase Sri Lanka's growing capabilities in the sector, drawing attention to key ports such as Colombo, Trincomalee, Hambantota and Gaul, as well as the Colombo Port City Project. Dr. Saratto Besekara, the chairman of the EDB Advisory Committee on Marine and Offshore Services, highlighted the country's rich maritime heritage and resources as key factors in attracting international investors and professionals. He also underscored Sri Lanka's vast potential to boost export revenue in the marine industry in the coming years. Captain Nirmal Silva, the harbour master at Sri Lanka Ports Authority, emphasised the strategic advantage of the country's proximity to India, noting that Sri Lanka's ports and marine industries stand to benefit greatly from India's economic growth. With ongoing developments in shipbuilding, repairs and bunkering, he stressed that these initiatives could be transformative for the nation's marine sector. 
a delegation of 20 foreign investors from India, Saudi Arabia, Maldives, France, Japan, Thailand and the United States and Cambodia visit Sri Lanka, Srinkamali and Hamathoda ports this week to explore opportunities for maritime investments. The visit was organized by the Export Development Board to highlight Sri Lanka's potential as a key hub for maritime activities and its growing blue economy. According to the EDB, the delegation explored a range of investment opportunities across various sectors including marina development, shipbuilding, vessel maintenance, engineering services, bunkering and related offshore services. The investors also assessed prospects for establishing joint ventures with local businesses or launching new enterprises to capitalize on the country's strategic location and expanding maritime sector. This visit marks a significant step towards strengthening Sri Lanka's position in the global maritime industry, with foreign investors showing keen interest in tapping into the country's economic potential in the sector. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. On the second trading day of the week, the market made a strong rebound from yesterday's downward trend, with the S&P SL20 closing higher and the ASPI also recording a notable gain. For further insights, we spoke with the Mantha Matthews from First Capital Holdings. The saving pressure that was there in the market over the last uh, few trading sessions were not there today and we saw a bit of a, a positive sentiment uh, in the market. So there was a sizable amount of uh, buying interest in the market, specifically into the uh, banking sector counters and the uh, conglomerates. So overall, uh, what we are seeing is uh, buying interest coming into broadly blue chip counters. So uh, with it, uh, we are seeing a bit of an improvement in the turnover as well. Today we saw turnover slightly above the 1 million mark. However, uh, the activity in the market also uh, is positive uh, retail activity is gradually uh, starting to pick up but uh, not to the uh, level that uh, we saw uh, during the previous uh, bullish uh, trend however uh, we are seeing a star a restart uh, in the uh, positive uh, momentum of the investors so overall uh, what we are also seeing uh, is a few uh, crossings in the uh, market. Uh, we saw crossings coming in uh, commercial bank and also uh, Lankem development. So other than that, um, all other trading activities has been on board. So basically, it has been uh, very uh, positive and uh, strong uh, market uh, trend and we are seeing, seeing a sort of a reversal in the market and we think that trend can uh, last over the uh, next couple of uh, days as well uh, reversing the volatility that has been there uh, over the last uh, three to four trading sessions thank you Sri Lanka is emerging from a default after excessive money printing to a target, a narrow policy rate in pursuit of rapid growth, which comprise monetary stability for its citizens. For further insights, we speak with Ranjan Ranthunga from First Capital Holdings. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka is scheduled to hold the final monetary policy review for the 2024 tomorrow. This will be the sixth policy review for the year and thus far the Central Bank of Sri Lanka have relaxed monetary policy rates by 75 bips to bring the standing deposit facility rate to 8.25% and standing lending facility rate to 9.25%. At the upcoming policy meeting, we believe that the central bank will look to lower rates again. Few things have contributed to this decision where we have the foreign reserves which recorded at USD 6.5 billion in October 24 growing at a steady rate. Then we have inflation which has fallen down to negative territory and had recorded a deflation of 0.8% for October 2024. And by the looks of it, we may see more deflation for the next two to three months ahead. Moreover, we also have steady buildup in liquidity positions where the overnight liquidity has surpassed the 100 billion mark and hovers in that range. So on the back of this, we believe the expected rate cut will arrive with central bank looking to adopt the single pulse rate from tomorrow's meeting. 
where we have assigned a probability of 80% for central bank to adopt a single policy rate. On the back of this, we expect CBSL to implement single policy stance with a rate cut of 100 BPS to the, uh, to, uh, the SDF, uh, to the SLF to bring it to the same as SDF at 8.25%. Moreover, we have also assigned a 5% probability where uh, 50, per, uh, 50 bips rate cut will be given to the SLF and the SDF which is currently at 8.25 will be raised to raised by 50 bips to 8.75%. Moreover, we have also assigned a 15% probability to uh, central bank uh, to lower SD, SLF by 125 bips while further reducing the SDF by further 25 bips, bips as well. Thank you. Gold prices remain steady today after more than 3% drop in the previous session, finding some support from US President-elect Donald Trump's proposed tariffs on imports from Canada, Mexico and China. Spot gold held steadily at $2,624.41 per ounce, recovering from earlier lows that marks its lowest level since November 18th. US gold futures edged up by 0.2%, reaching $2,624.70. Traditionally, gold seen as a safe haven in investment tends to benefit during times of economic and geopolitical uncertainty, such as trade wars and global conflicts, which have been contributing to recent market volatility. The metal is also supported by concerns over inflation and the ongoing uncertainty in global markets. Investors are closely monitoring geopolitical developments as they assess the potential impact on gold prices in the coming weeks. Oil prices dropped in early Asian trading today, continuing the downward trend from the previous session, as the possibility of a ceasefire between Israel and Lebanon led traders to reduce their risk premium on crude. Brent oil futures with January delivery fell 0.3% to $72.80 per barrel, while West Texas intermediate crude futures also dropped 0.3%, settling at $68.33 per barrel. The decline in oil prices was further compounded by a surge in the US dollar triggered by US President elect. Donald Trump's threat to impose import tariffs on China, Canada and Mexico. Prices have already tumbled the day before following reports that Israel and Lebanese militant groups Hezbollah were close to finalizing a US brokered ceasefire agreement. The Sri Lankan rupee has depreciated further against the US dollar today compared to yesterday. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, both the buying and the selling rates for the US dollar have risen. However, the rupee has appreciated against a range of other foreign currencies, including Gulf currencies. Let's now take a look, a closer look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is performing against other global currencies. Short break now. This is the nightly business report. Welcome back. Revolt Motors has proudly made its debut in Sri Lankan two-wheel market with the launch of its cutting-edge electric motor vehicles, the RV400 and the RV BRZ. Revolt Motors has made its debut in Sri Lanka, marking the country as its first international market. The company kicked off its operations with the launch of two electric motorcycles, the RV400 and the RV400 BRC. As a part of its expansion plan, Revolt intends to open 15 dealerships in Sri Lanka during the first phase of its operations. In addition to the RV400 models, Revolt Motors is preparing to launch a new electric motorcycle, the AW1, which will first debut in India before being introduced to Sri Lanka. The AW1 is positioned as a deluxe commuter motorcycle and features a fresh design distinct from the RV400 range, which has been in the market for several years. The new model will be available in two battery pack options, with the larger battery offering a range of 150 km before needing a recharge. The company's entry into the Sri Lankan market is a part of its broader strategy to expand across South Asia and make a significant impact on the region's two-wheel industry. 
Nations Trust Bank has made history as the first financial institution in Sri Lanka to introduce the Touch Card, an innovative initiative developed in collaboration with MasterCard. The Touch Card is specifically designed to assist visually impaired and partially sighted card holders, enhancing the bank's debit card offerings while reinforcing its commitment to providing customer experiences that meet global standards. The Touch Card is specifically designed to assist visually impaired and partially sighted card holders, enhancing the bank's debit card offerings while reinforcing its commitment to providing customer experiences that meet global standards. The card features a unique rounded notch allowing visually impaired users to easily identify it among other cards. It was developed in partnership with a global card manufacturer and underwent thorough interviews by organizations such as Visions in the United States and the Royal National Institute of Blind People in the United Kingdom. By launching the Touch Card, Nations Trust Bank together with MasterCard is taking significant steps towards creating a more inclusive and sustainable payment ecosystem, reflecting the bank's vision for an economy that benefits all. PICME has entered into a strategic partnership with the University of Moratua to enhance human resource development and drive innovation in logistics sector, aiming to strengthen operational excellence and foster industry growth. PICME has formalized a strategic collaboration with the University of Moratua through a signing of a Memorandum of Understanding by Jeffrey Zulfer, the CEO of PICME, and Professor Endi Gunavardhana, the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Moratua. This partnership aims to strengthen human resource development and foster innovation in the logistics sector. As part of the initiative, PICME will offer management trainee placements to 10 to 15 graduates annually from the University of Moratua's BSc in Transport and Logistics Management and BSc in Transport Management and Logistics Engineering programs. In addition, 10 undergraduates from these programs will have the opportunity to gain valuable hands-on experience through internships at PICME each year. The collaboration also includes structured mentoring, skill-building programs and career guidance to better prepare students for the industry. Furthermore, PICME will contribute to the maintenance and development of the University of Moratua's Transport Management and Logistics Engineering Department ensuring a conducive learning environment for students. Epic Lanka recently participated in the World Financial Innovation Series in Jakarta, showcasing its advanced fintech solutions, including card payment systems, authentication technologies and business process automation. The event, which drew over 1,000 participants, provided a platform for Epic Lanka to expand its presence in East Asia. Known for its transmotive solutions in Malaysia and Singapore, Epic Lanka presented 20 innovative products across various fintech areas, including mobile banking, debt collection and custom onboarding. This participation further strengthens the company's position in the global fintech sector. Epic Lanka's presence in WFIS highlights its commitment to driving innovation and enhancing financial services across Asia. The event also provided valuable networking opportunities with industry leaders and regulators. The Commercial Bank of Ceylon has achieved another milestone in its digital revolution with Comback Digital, the bank's omnichannel digital banking platform, surpassing 1.5 million registered users. Announcing the landmark, the bank said the award-winning platform continues to lead digital transformation in Sri Lanka's banking sector as the most widely used digital channel that serves retail, SME and corporate clients. Driven by Commercial Bank's digital by default business model, Combank Digital currently processes more than 5 million transactions a month with a digital penetration of 45% and 48 million customer interactions and was processing transactions averaging 400 billion rupees in value per month by the end of October this year. Offered via a responsive web application and three native mobile applications, Combank Digital encompasses functionalities ranging from banking needs, wealth investment, payments and lifestyle with access across all devices such as desktop PCs, laptop computers, tabs and smartphones. Commercial bank customers enjoy the convenience of self-registration for Combank Digital, gaining instant access to the banking platform that is secured with industry-level security standards to provide a convenient, swift and safe digital 24-7, 365-day banking experience in their preferred language wherever they are in the world. Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is a Nightly Business Report.
Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks fell today after US President-elect Donald Trump threatened to impose additional trade tariffs on China and other nations, reigniting concerns of a renewed trade war. While Wall Street indexes reached record highs yesterday, US stock futures were subdued in Asian trading, limiting initial gains following Trump's tariff fawning. Japan's Nikkei 225 dropped 1.2% and the topics fell 1.3%, reversing Monday's gains of 1.2% and 0.7% respectively. South Korea's Kospi declined by 0.6%, while Thailand's set index edged 0.2% lower. However, Chinese stocks showed resilience, with the Shanghai Shenzhen CSI 300 and the Shanghai Composite indexes rising by 0.3% and 0.4% respectively. Hong Kong's Hang Sheng index also gained 0.6%, defying Trump's tariff threats. Britain's financial regulator said it had fined Barclays $51 million in total for its failure to disclose certain arrangements with Qatari entities in 2008. Barclays has been fined $50.9 million for its failure to disclose certain arrangements with Qatari entities in 2008. Britain's financial regulator, the FCA, announced the penalty on Monday. It dates back to the height of the financial crisis, when Barclays scrambled to raise funds from overseas investors, including Qatar, in order to avoid a state bailout. The FCA said in 2022 that the British bank paid undisclosed fees to Qatari funds involved in its rescue. It said Barclays' conduct in the capital raising was reckless and lacked integrity. The FCA at the time fined Barclays nearly $63 million, which the bank appealed. In a statement on Monday, Barclays said it did not accept the FCA's findings, but had withdrawn its appeal. It added that the interests of the bank, its shareholders and other stakeholders were best served by the withdrawal, and that there would be no material financial impact from the fine. Northwall's financial collapse deals a blow to Europe's plan to set up its own battery industry to power electric cars, stirring a debate about whether it needs to do more to attract investment as startups struggle to catch up with Chinese rivals. Northvolt's financial collapse could spell the end of Europe's ambitions to set up its own battery industry to power electric cars. It sparked debate over whether the continent needs to do more to attract investment as startups struggle to near Chinese rivals. The Swedish company, Europe's biggest hope for an EV battery champion, filed for bankruptcy in the US on Thursday. That's after funding talks with investors and creditors, including Volkswagen and Goldman Sachs, failed. Northvolt, whose motto is Make Oil History, has received more than $10 billion in equity, debt and public financing since its 2016 startup. But it said it needed up to $1.2 billion in new funds under the restructuring process, which it hopes will end by the end of March. In recent months, it has shrunk the business and cut jobs in a bid to shore up its finances. It has struggled to produce sufficient volumes of high-quality batteries and lost a $2.1 billion contract from BMW in June. That has left Europe's ambitions to build its own battery industry looking like a distant dream. In recent years, Northvolt led a wave of European startups investing tens of billions of dollars to serve the continent's automakers as they switch to EVs. But growth in EV demand is moving at a slower pace than many in the industry projected. And data shows China has taken a huge lead in powering EVs, controlling 85% of global battery cell production. Making batteries and cells, the units that store and convert chemical energy into electricity, is a delicate process. Doing so at scale is a challenge for any battery maker. Northvolt has missed some in-house targets and curtailed production at its battery sales plant in northern Sweden. Alongside this, analysts have said China is technologically 10 years ahead of the West in batteries. At least eight companies have postponed or abandoned EV battery projects in Europe this year. That's all from us on the Nightly Business Report for today. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest updates in the Business Globe. Until then, I'm Sonia Mutanayaka. Thank you for watching and have a good night.